Oh yes, very excited. What's up everyone, I'm Jason C, and today we got something brand new from Chattanooga Whiskey. It's the first release in their new barrel finishing series. It's a tawny port finish. Let's taste it and then test it against some other popular port finished bourbons today on the Mash and Drum. Chattanooga Whiskey became the first distillery in Chattanooga in over a century. Now in 2015, they began the patient process of crafting their malt forward style of straight bourbon whiskey. They call it Tennessee High Malt and after eight years in the making, their Tennessee High Malt was released in August 2019. I'll leave a link right here for you guys to see my previous review to hear the full story of Chattanooga Whiskey. It's a really cool story, it's very rock and roll and if you haven't watched it yet, then definitely click that link and check it out. Since then, Chattanooga has been on my radar and one of my favorite new distilleries with their 91 Solara Barrel Finished Bourbon, their 111 Cast Strength High Malt, and their 99 Proof High Malt Rye Whiskey. Now, their use of multiple mash bills including yellow corn, malted rye, caramel malted barley, honey malted barley, and more have really kind of made them a standout for me and made them somewhat pretty, pretty unique. Now, it may not be everyone's type of flavor profile, but personally, I have been a fan of what they're doing since the beginning. They are different, unique, transparent, and that's what I like especially. And now they have just released this new straight bourbon whiskey finished in tawny port casks as part of their new barrel finishing series. So for this bottle, their first finish, Chattanooga Whiskey sought out tawny port wine barrels from Portugal, which is a popular finishing cask in whiskey these days. Now, the finishing casks come from the easternmost edge of the famous Douro Valley, bordering Spain known as Douro Superior. That region yields some of the highest quality tawny ports of the region, noted for their rich caramel sweet and fruit forward characteristics. So to best complement those flavors of the finishing barrels, head distiller Grant McCracken and his team brought together a custom blend of six Tennessee high malt mash bills, all selected together for their fruity flavors and aromas. This is aged for over three years, including six months in the tawny port casks itself. Total contains 25% specialty malt, this is bottled at 95 proof, it's non-chill filtered, and priced at an affordable 46 bucks. All right, super excited to try this with you guys. We're also gonna be comparing it and do kind of a, a quick blind tasting between the Isaac Bowman, the Angel's Envy, and also the Woodenville Port Cask Finish to see how the Chattanooga actually stacks up, but let's taste it first on its own, see what we get. It's, it's really jammy. <laughs> when it opens up so as you've seen I've taken a good amount of pours of this because I don't think a really good finished bourbon or any finished whiskey for, for that matter really opens up until it gets really you know a, a good amount past the shoulder so I like to let those fruit notes come out and see how it reacts to a little bit of oxidation and see how it tastes so it's not as jammy uh, in the beginning as it is now so once this thing opens up a lot of blackberries come forward a lot of also like a black cherry, dark cherry note. You know, they have like the flavored fig bar, like the fig newtons, like you get like a, you get like a strawberry fig newton or an apple fig newton. This is like, uh, like a blackberry fig newton or something. There's a little bit of fig, maybe a little bit of a date note too. The high malt still comes through, which is what you want. I, I don't like when, personally, I don't like when a finish overtakes the backbone and the true nature of what the, the distillery's flavor profile is supposed to be. I like it to still shine through and have that port finish or whatever other finish it may be complement it rather than overtake it. Definitely happening here. But what I remember with Chattanooga, because of that high malt, you get a lot of kind of like toast and, and honey characteristics. You get a little bit of the grain, but it's all wrapped up together with the raisin and date and the fig newton. <laughs> 
A little bit of chocolate note too here on the very back end. A little slight chocolate hint. Yeah, the toast note is interesting. I always explain the like the toastiness is it's like when you put toast in the toaster and then you walk away and to go do something and then you, you forget that it's in the toaster. So then you kind of like, oh crap, I have to go to the toaster and I got toast in there, it's gonna burn. And then you save it right before it's about to burn. It's kind of that level of toast. It's like, you know, right before, you know, right before you, you pretty much char the entire piece of toast. Again, it's really not as fruit forward in the beginning as it is now. I really like how it's balancing out. Let's go for a sip. Here we go, guys. Ooh, that sip had a lot more chocolate than I was expecting. Mm. Yeah, they sell those candies in the store too, like the chocolate covered blueberries, chocolate covered cherries. It's kind of reminding me of that, but it has a really nice spice to it. You still get the toast and the honey in the front of the palate. Let's go for another sip. Okay, second sip, more of the honey comes through. And that like honey and, and date and fig note all comes up front. Gets a little bit more jammy on the mid palate and on the back end. It's a nice wave of chocolate. Mm. Yeah, the back end you get the chocolate too. The chocolate note seems to be getting stronger, the, you know, the, the more you spend time with it. We'll go for another sip. My favorite part of this might actually be the finish with that chocolate and the spice. Most port finish uh, bourbons or whiskeys, you don't get usually a long burn or a long finish uh, that's spicy and complex, usually because it's a lot sweeter or as we've seen in, you know, historically, usually the proof is a little bit low. Uh, but for this, it's really bringing the nice spice, the balance to go along with the with the berries, the dark fruits, and then all that, like the fig newtons <laughs> and, uh, and the honey and the toast. One last sip, we'll do a quick comparison. Here we go. Yeah, being non-chill filtered as well, it's got a really velvety mouthfeel here. I mean, personally, I don't drink a lot of port finish. I have to kind of be in the mood for it, any finish for that matter. Uh, but but this, with that kind of the higher proof, right at 95, offering that spice, I would probably go to this one a little bit more often. I really like the, the balance of flavors here. I, I will say it takes a little while to get there. You got to let it open up and then all the really the really nice fruit flavors and the balance really just come together really well. Great release. Let's see how it stacks up against these three other popular uh, ones on the market right now. All right, guys, I have all four poured here. Let's mix them up a little bit. All right, so I got them mixed up. I used the Black Glen Cairns because there's actually a big color difference between, you know, the four of these. When I originally poured them, uh, I had them in clear glens, and then I'm like, I'm going to be able to tell what these are just based on color. So I put them in the Black uh, Glen Cairns too, so I couldn't see what color they were. Let's see what we got. Let's start with number one here. Now, so the first one off the bat's very grapey. Or like, or, or whiny? Is that is that a is that a note? It, it smells like a, like a sweet wine, which is you know the port finish, obviously. But there's a nuttiness there to it. Definitely getting the honey, getting the fig. Also that raisin note, getting more of a of a raisin note here, which is kind of nice, like that freshly cracked sun made raisin box. I know I've said that before, but it is it's a very familiar note. You know, for me, you know, growing up, you get the raisins as a snack, and so I always remember that smell. All right, pretty good on the nose. I really like the nose on that one. Very balanced. All right, let's go to number two. Number two is a really nice nose. This is very, like, grape and black cherry bubblegum almost. Man, I love the nose on this one. This one's really good. It's very... I don't know which one I like the nose on more. This one's nice on the on the nose. A little bit of a nuttiness there. It's like black cherry. It's like a black cherry, um, what do you call it? Like a black cherry float. There's like some, some cream soda in there. Black cherry ice cream. Definitely get a little bit of an oakiness in here too. There's a nice little sweet oak note I'm getting in here as well. Definitely getting the berries, but it's more coming across to me like a black cherry. It's kind of nice. A little bit of chocolate in this one too. All right. I'm not sure. I thought... I thought maybe I had number one pegged. This may, it could be back to the Chattanooga, but number two also <laughs> smelled pretty damn good. It was kind of close. Let's go to number three, see what we get. Wow, number three is uh, like an absolute banana bomb. It's, just, it's banana. I, I can't get it out. It's like banana and sugar. 
it has a little bit of fruit there. Now, I mean, all of these are kind of around the same proof. Yeah, you know, we already said that the Chattanooga was 95. Uh, the Angels Enemy is only 86.6. You have the Woodenville at 90, and then you have the Isaac Bowman at 92. So they're all around that same family. Yeah, this is like banana and artificial, like like banana, like runts, like runts bananas. That's what I'm getting, like the candy, like an artificial banana flavor. A little bit of fruit there. All right, so the last one on the nose. Mm, the last one's got a nice nose too. A little bit spicier, a little bit more pepper on the nose here. Definitely some fruit. Definitely get some red. This is more of a strawberry though. I'm not getting so much like a dark berry. I'm getting more of a little bit of a brighter strawberry note here. Kind of nice on the nose. A little bit of nuttiness as well. I'm getting kind of that bubblegum note too a little bit that I was getting on number two. Hmm. All right, so as far as noses go, I mean, one and two are right in line here. One and two are close. I might give the edge slightly to one. Um, there's just another layer of flavor there on number one. Number two, if, if number one is number one, number two is pretty much like one B or one A, whatever you want to call it. They are neck and neck. Uh, I would probably give number four the third place spot and number three the last place spot. Wasn't really getting a lot much else than the banana runs I was getting. All right, let's go for a quick taste. Number one, that's the chocolate, the Fig Newton, toast, a lot of honey there too. I'm, I'm reserving what I think that is because I, I have to taste number two because number two has a very similar and very, I don't know, the, the nose is right on par with number one. But it might have a difference on the palate. Nice little spicy finish on number one, too. Let's go here for another one. You had a little hint of spice in the back end with the chocolate, all the fruit up front and the honey. That's really good. All right, let's go to number two. Okay, so number two had a little bit more of like a, like a root beery, sassafras, black licorice type note on it, mixing with all that fruit. Good spice in the back end of that one a little bit too. Hmm. <laughs> uh, all right. Okay, so the difference here, difference here so far is two is very front loaded with a lot of flavor. It's, it's not following through though too much on the finish like number one was. One more sip of number two. A little bit of finish, a little bit of tannic oak there on the back end, but it's not giving me as interesting as a finish as number one was. All right, let's go to number three. Number three was the the banana runs one. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, there's not a lot going on in number three. It's banana and almost like a peach note to it, but which is weird. Get a little bit of the red fruit on the back end. There's a, there might be like a very bright grape note on the very back end of that. Not much of a finish at all. Go for another sip of three. Yeah, I mean, three's all right. I probably have a good feeling of what three is, but. I'm not really getting a lot of the port notes. I'm just, I just keep getting like banana and bubble gum and sugar. Like, where's the port? <laughs> I want more port in that one. All right, let's go to number four here. Number four is definitely better than three. Mm, good amount of nuttiness and spice there on number four. Really nice balance of flavors. I don't think it's as complex so far as one and two, but let's go for another sip, check it out. Oh, well, that has a nice balance to it. The spice really came through. Yeah, it's like chocolate, and it's like a chocolate strawberry-like dessert with just black pepper on it. That's really, man, I don't know. Number four was a little bit underwhelming on the nose, but on the palate, it's kind of making up for it. One last sip, and then we'll rank them. My first, second, and third place, they're going to be real close. Number three here, I think, is easily last place. So we'll do number three in last place. I think I have a definitive favorite though. 
Man, number two is so good up front, it's just lacking a finish. Number four. I don't know, number four just has a little bit more going on in the palette. The nose, though, isn't as good as number two, so do I give number two a little bit more of a bump here? Just because it has a better nose than number four? But number four on the palette is kind of, I wouldn't say destroying number two, but... It's definitely a little bit more interesting. All right. I think I'm going to put number two in third. And number four is, I think, is going to move to second place for me. Number one is going to stay number one. Because I think number one is the most rich and complex. All right, guys. Let's find out what these are. Number four for last place for me, I had a feeling may, may have been Angel's Envy. There just wasn't a lot of ports to it. Yep. Angel's Envy. I mean, I always give Angel's Envy a lot of props because, you know, it, this bottle has gotten uh, some, uh, like, newbies into uh, into bourbon for me and whiskey in general. It's a very easy sipper. It is very sweet. But, and, and this is actually the bottle that's the reason why I use the Black Glen Cairns because the, when you compare this one to the other three in the glass, it, it's so much lighter. Um, I mean, and we're talking 86.6. This is, it's, you know, you know, three, three proof points and change below what the, uh, the Woodenville is. And the fact that the Woodenville has so much more color than this one, it's like, where's the port in the Angel's Envy? Like I, I need more port finish in there. I'm just really getting, I just really got the banana note in it, a little bit of peach. There was some fruit there, but not much else. Um, and for 50 bucks, you kind of want more of that that port finish there all right so the top three are going to be the, the weird ones because i was very surprised at you know how different but also similar they were <laughs> let's go to number three. Oh shit you got it okay number three is the woodenville so this one on the palette is i mean up front like i said it's completely front loaded you get so much sweetness and richness the black cherry the cherry garcia ice cream a little bit of that cream soda. The cream soda, root beer, like sassafras note, maybe clued me in a little bit that that could have been the Woodenville. But it really lost me on the finish. Once you kind of sip it, it goes away real fast. Some people like that. I like a little bit of, you know, something to hold on to on the very back end of the palate, as you guys know. But, uh, yeah, that one had all the sweetness you love and a good port finish up front. But it really disappeared quickly, which brings me to number two and number one. <laughs> number two is the Isaac Bowman now the Isaac Bowman I thought would come in probably third I didn't think it was going to take down the Woodenville but it did this did really well in the blind tasting a lot more of a of, of a spice to it definitely the nose on this definitely defies what the palate is to me the nose on this just was not was not doing it for me. I couldn't get much of a nose on it but on the palate it really performed well. I mean, a lot of fruit, a lot of spice, a little bit of chocolate. The raisin note was there and it just had that balance to me that I love. And then number one, the brand new Chattanooga whiskey port finish. Look at Chattanooga coming in that 95 proofer, the chocolate, the balance, the black raspberry, the fig newton, the dates, the raisin, all those flavors in here to be had along with that toast and honey. Again, a, a true kind of example of what I like in a finished bourbon. It, you know, you could you could finish a bourbon, but I don't want it to overtake the uh, the the true characteristic of what the distillery has to offer. And I think uh, Chattanooga nailed it with this one. But the Isaac Bowman comes in if you can't find the uh, the Chattanooga. This is starting uh, to hit stores anywhere they sell Chattanooga near you. Take a look around. I know it's online. I think Sealbox has it as well. Uh, Isaac Bowman, uh, this is out of Virginia. Not really sure the distribution of this one, but it's a great port finished bourbon. Woodenville is getting you know more widespread uh, everywhere, but this 90 proofer is really great. If you want something sweet without the burn or out the peppery finish, you definitely want to go for the Woodenville. And the Angel's Envy, if you want to taste more port, then go for these three. If you really just kind of want to have banana and sugar, then go for the Angel's Envy. All right, guys, well, thanks for watching this review and video for the first release in the Chattanooga Wood Finishing Series, their 20 port cast. Hope you liked it. If you did, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit the like button. 
you haven't yet, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. And while you're doing that, while you're subscribing, I'm gonna I'm gonna blend all four. Mm -hmm. All right, let's try the blend real quick. That is not bad. That is not bad. I still get the damn banana though from the Angels Envy. <laughs> All right, guys, I always say it's not about the whiskey. It's the people you share it with. Cheers, and I will see you next time on the Mash and Drum. Great release, Chattanooga. Looking forward to your next finishing series release. Take care, everybody.